Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a special edition of Extra Time TV. It's day four of the World Cup for us and lots of football going on, lots of things happening. Thank you for supporting our videos. But James, before we get into all that, we're here at Smokey and Bunty's down on the avenue in Trinidad Tobago where we have, we have lots of giveaways. James, tell the fans out there some reasons why they should come down. Well, first of all, we're in beautiful sunny Trinidad and Tobago here. We have lots of beers obviously on sale as we see at the bar, but we have that wonderful trip for two to Tobago flights. You know, so come down here, try and win that. It'll be given away on the final on the 18th of December. Yes. We have six pairs of Armour Flex shin guards, and obviously a chance for you also to get a discount on those, and many, many other things. It's, it's, it's wonderful. We have so many things, and that's just a snippet of what we have, Andre. Yes, yes, and as we go along with the show, you know, we'll try to, you know, give you little clues and questions to, to interact and win prizes, because we are not just on our YouTube channel and on the social media for e Smokey and Bonties and EXCV, but also, on some television channels. James, tell the fans about the channels. Yes, we're with our friends um, QNN and Suriname. Obviously, we have METV here in Trinidad and Tobago. You can catch us at 10.30 every day and 2 p.m. for that coverage, obviously, of the of the, um, the, the greatest show on earth, as yes. you're calling it. And um, obviously, on our YouTube channel, too. So you can get us everywhere, Andre. Yes, yes, we're everywhere, folks, as James said. So let's get into the football, James. So the first game this morning was Morocco versus Croatia. Uh, you know, it's a, a matchup between two teams, you know, the, the, the World Cup finalists last time around. Morocco has a bunch of players that I like, you know, particularly Hakimi. Inter Milan once again. So James, you know, it was a nil-nil draw, you know, uh, both teams played 4-3-3. What do you think about this game? This was a very, very entertaining game. It went, I mean, end-to-end. -end. I think Bono, the goalkeeper for uh, from Sevilla. From YouTube? Had, well, from YouTube, yeah. Many people might know him, but um, he had an excellent gaming goal for... Um, for Morocco, um, came up with some big saves and probably kept kept the score at bay. But Modric, he tried, he tried to get his troops there, but really nobody was able to find the deadlock. But it was a very, very entertaining game. I thought Morocco drove forward. They had pace. Obviously, you talked about Hakimi on the on the right. He bombed down that line, but the balls from Vich, um, the obviously the ex Chelsea player there. I think he played with your guys too. Yep. You're into Milan. Well, Hakimi did. Sorry, Hakimi. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. And. Um, some of the balls to him were just phenomenal. I mean, it was switch and play, a masterclass actually. So yes. it was unbelievable the fact that the game is a draw, but it was it was a wonderful game. Yeah, it just goes to show you how this tournament is not going. You know, all these stereotypes we've had. I've been even saying this at the last World Cup. You know, the foregone conclusions are gone. The, the playing field is level now, folks. I mean, you will have the odd exception, but you know, we've been seeing a trend, which we'll get to in a little bit. But you know, with players like Perisic and Modric, you know, Perisic is a very strong left-sided player. He can play wing back, he can play out wide. So, you know, to me, it was a surprise that there was not at least one goal, but it just goes to show the quality and preparation of both teams. You know, uh, you know, both teams played 4-3-3. They sort of canceled each other out. And I, I would even say Perisic and Hakimi, which is interesting because they were into Milan teammates, kind of it's like almost like the polar opposites on each team. You know, both wing back type players. Although Perisic plays more forward for Croatia. But, you know, uh, the result was, I guess, fear, if you want to call it that. But, you know, besides uh, Bono being in goal, James, and not that Bono from you two folks, but, uh, you know, any other additional things that you didn't notice on this game? Well, I think, I mean, obviously, um, like I said, the goalkeeper came out big, but there was lots of players on show. But I think, like I said yesterday, the opening game of the World Cup is very much a chess match. Yes, yes. And both teams did not want to lose too much, you know, to give too much away. As you said, they both played a 4-3-3. Four, three, four, three, three. But um, at the end, it's a point, it's something for them to build on and carry into the next game. Yes, yes. So, you know, um, speaking about the next game, we're going to head into the next game because there's so many games that come in thick and fast, folks. But before, before we do that, we'll talk about safety. Be sure, you know, folks, you know, even though the restrictions are down and everybody's having fun again and, you know, the masks are off, take off your mask, uh, you still have to be safe and practice, you know, hygienic, you know, safe protocols for yourself. So, you know, usually, we use the biotech and folks we'll ha we have a little message from biotech so take a look biotech plus is certified green biodegradable certified food safe certified non-toxic biotech plus safe for the environment and your entire family so, all right, folks, we're back. You know, that's a lovely message. Be sure to check out their products and purchase them because we use them. We use them all the time and it's really great. So, the game, the game, James, that everybody's talking wow. about. It seems like this is a World Cup with a lot of hot topics. 
Germany took on Japan. Japan came away 2 1 winners. Uh, you know, Germany scored a goal for, uh, with Gundogan in the 33rd minute, and Japan in the second half got two goals. So, James, there's a player I like in Japan. We'll talk about that again. Once again, a shameless into Milan plug, Nagatomo. What do you think about this game, James? Well, obviously the opening goal um, came from a, from the penalty spot. It was a little bit of a mistake from the goalkeeper there. Um, he came out, he tried to stay big, and then he caught, obviously, Godoying in there um, with his knee at the back and obviously gave away that penalty. Um, sorry, he caught the player, and then obviously he scored the penalty. But um, it was a little bit harsh because I thought the Japanese goalkeeper... Um, Nichigona um, had a great game, you know, he had mm. some big, big saves at the end, two or three double saves, you know, and um, but at the end of the day, Japan were able to come up big and I think it was a master stroke from the Japanese coach there because um, he made two substitutions and the two substitute scored, you know, yep. so it was obviously the goal from Doan on the 75th minute and then Osano on the 82nd and that obviously took away the hopes for Germany. They tried and they knocked and they knocked and they huffed and they puffed and they tried to blow the wall down. They were not able to and obviously Japan came out 2-1 winner. And maybe Kroos, Kroos knew something. That's why he didn't come to the World Cup because in 2018, folks, you know, they started off similarly, not well. And, you know, just like Argentina and the other teams before, we're going to have to figure out, both teams are going to have to step it up really quickly. They have a strong team. And I'm just speaking about knocking on the door, we'll talk quickly about the stats. Germany had 74% possession versus Japan having, you know, 26. 26 shots versus 12. Yet, we've been seeing a trend where a lot of these teams can't really break it down. The Germanese, the Argentinas. We still have to see Brazil and Portugal. What do you think about that? Well, one of the things I would say, I mean, the stats say one thing, but one of the big weaknesses that came into this game was the fact that Germany could not defend wide areas. Mm -hmm. They have that little weakness here, and that is exactly what Jap Japan exploited. Mm -hmm. They got the ball wide, they whipped it, and obviously they had the goal that was um, scored by Meira, the Celtic player, um, in the opening 10, 15 minutes. It mm -hmm. was disallowed, obviously, for offside. But it showed the intent that Japan had, and then obviously they came back and got the two goals. So Germany should have, you know, should have kn known what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. They didn't, and um, I think definitely their, their left fullback. I can't remember his name right now, but he got caught too high up for at least the second goal, and obviously Japan punished them. And the one thing I would say is, though, I'm a big fan of Manuel Neuer. Mm -hmm. He could have done better with the goal. You read my mind. Instead of standing big, like obviously we know he does, he kind of shut down and the ball was played on the inside of his post and he lost the goal. So I have to say I'm very disappointed from that point of view, especially being the, the German skipper. Mm -hmm. But this is football. Yep. And you know, this is something interesting about the World Cup. This is why we love the game, folks, because nothing goes according to script. It's absolutely crazy. We spoke about the Argentina game yesterday. You can take a look at that video. Uh, we'll have it on YouTube and you know, other links as well. And you know, let us know what you think in the comment section. What do you think about Germany's performance so far? This is a very strong team, but in the last three, two international competitions, not including this one, they did not really live up their expectations. They had a really strong squad. And um, you know, let us know what you think. There's a lot of German fans in Trinidad and around the world who will be wondering what's going on. So. You know, just to end things off, James, you know, this is a team, some would argue, is in transition, you know, from the days of Ozil, uh, you know, Philip Lam and these guys, uh, Kroos, which I was a bit surprised that he this, he excluded himself from the team. Um, do you think that was an indication that maybe he saw something or whatever? I'm just, I'm just fanning the flames, folks. Well, I think, I mean, the one thing as an older player or a player getting on in age, you want to try and... Um, savor those minutes that you have left in the legs and I think to me that was just that from him yes. I also think he sees that there's obviously good young players coming through there mm. and I think um, he was just in a sense passing on the baton yep. he did that as I say I didn't think they did too badly in midfield but I just think it was that frailty at the back I mean Rudiger I didn't think had a best, the best of games to be honest yeah. um, I think he got caught in a position a few times but I expect more from as I say, we know Manuel Neuer as a general leader at the back there yeah for them to lose this game, he will be very disappointed, and it could be the the start of their trip home. You know, they're going to have to come up big um, in the next game, so we'll just have to wait and see. Yes, folks, and let us know what you think in the comment section below about that. And you know, we're going to head into the next game. Spain, you know, <laughs> trashed, thrashed, whatever you want to use the word, trounced Costa Rica seven nil, folks. You know, win the Concacaf. It was an amazing goal, and to be honest, uh, you know, I'm going to call out, uh, you know, Luis Enrique and his men. It was. I like I was stunned. I really thought Costa Rica would have put up more of a fight. Um, you know, Kayla Navas had a bit of a hauler. So before we get into the scoreline, which is very obvious, you know, James, you know, 
What do you think about the performance of Keila Navas? He's a guy who has been great for Real Madrid. He's still a pretty top keeper, but I mean, this this is pretty tough, though. Yeah, it was a very difficult game for him. I think he made quite a few, I don't want to say schoolboy mistakes, but there was one or two of the goals, for example. He came out and stood behind his own defender instead of, you know, when there's a defender there between you and the ball, you can stay on your line at that point. And yeah. if he had stayed on his line, he would have obviously been able to try and save the, obviously the goal. So right. there was little things like that. I mean, I think some of the goals, he was left exposed. Yep. But he will be, he will be disappointed, obviously. I mean, anybody that loses seven goals, you know, will be disappointed. But I think... Obviously, Costa Rica being from the Con Concacaf region, we're disappointed too. Yeah. We thought they have they have a lot of pace going forward, but they just look so frail. I mean, the glass shattered, and yep. you know we saw what happened. The seven goals went in. Yeah, correct. And you know, like uh, you know, Costa Rica is a team uh, you know that was really strong in 2014. They, oh, at one point in time, I would say they were one of the strongest teams in the Caribbean, even ahead of Mexico around that 2014 cycle. That cycle is clearly kind of on the decline now. It's short today, and you know, Spain did what Luis Enrique has been doing a while now. And one of the issues a lot of people were criticizing Spain for is that they have a lot of possession, but they're not able to finish, which which is another team we'll talk about. But clearly today with the goal scorers, you know, like uh, Asensio, uh, Torres, Gavi, Morata, these guys were finishing. You know, Morata is a guy, you know, who's been around Europe. Um, that issue has now been solved and possession wise, you know, 82%. But I think Andre, you hit the nail on the head there. I mean. Usually they'd pass the ball to death. Yeah. We saw that obviously in the last World Cup, but yeah. I think this time it clicked. I thought um, Gavi was excellent in there. Pedri, Asensio, Olmo. I mean, lots of movement, lots of, lots of passing, but they were able to get into space and finish it for you know for themselves. So I mean, it, it's it's a big step forward for Spain. Yep. I think again, like I said yesterday, they're signalling their intentions going forward. Obviously yep. for the competition. And I think everybody will be standing up saying, wow, this is something that we didn't see the last time around. Mm -hmm. These guys are now coming of age. Yep. Some of them, I mean, I think they're the third youngest team in the tournament, actually. Uh, most of their 60% of their players, obviously, under 25. Correct. So they have a very good chance of going forward. And I mean, the only thing I would say is their goalkeeper there, he probably had his deck chair out sitting mm -hmm. there. And I mean, I can't think of anything he had to do in the whole game. Yep, yep. And the thing is... uh. In the last Euros, a lot of people criticized Luis Enrique for his style of play and using a lot of young players, even benching some players. Um, you know, he had the courage to remove Sergio Ramos and th those other players. Now, they'll be stronger tests for sure. Um, you know, a lot of people have been questioning the inclusion of Busquets still. They think he's kind of lost that step that you need at that level. So against teams that play at high intensity, they may struggle. But for now, the criticism has been answered that, you know, they have scoring the goals when they need to. It's not like an 82% possession game and it's 1-0. Um, so I think, you know, credit to Luis Enrique for starting that new cycle. Because I think a lot of people, they were kind of holding on to the previous generation. You know, where do we go from Xavi and Iniesta? And it, it looks good. They look good, folks. So Spain looks the part for now. But as we know, folks, the script is never written in these tournaments. They will start off really good and then who knows what will happen in the next game. Let us know what you think about uh, <coughs> Luis Enrique's uh, chances. I win and I actually coughed there, I don't know why. I need to hydrate. But anyway, moving along, James. So, you know, the final game of the day. You know, it was a team from our region, Canada, took on one of the highest ranked teams in the world, which is highly debatable. And I'm openly going to say those FIFA rankings are very questionable. <laughs> but Belgium, you know, it's a team, the golden generation. It's, uh, I would say the sunset of that golden generation. The game ended 1-0 to Belgium. James, what do you think about this game? This game was absolutely sensational. Even from a neutral, I mean, I thought Canada were absolutely fantastic. Jonathan David, Alfonso Davies, Buchanan. Um, I could go through so many of the players, but it was they, they, they pushed Belgium in from the right from the beginning. They obviously got the penalty, which was missed. Obviously, Courtois came up with a massive save. Mm -hmm. The funny thing is, I think there was another penalty right after that, and I think if they hadn't got that first penalty, obviously. Um, they would have got this one and yeah. I think to me if it's a penalty it's a penalty so you should give it as well so mm -hmm. I think that's a questionable moment obviously from the referee but yes. obviously Belgium came back and got the goal it was a great finish from Bashami there mm -hmm. um, but Canada deserves something out of this game yep and the thing is you know it was pretty I think one of the things I noticed is that physically even before this tournament you and I spoke about them physically they are such specimens in terms of uh, how they perform, you know, like I, I think they are the definition of what a modern footballer should be now. They are strong, they are fast, and they're mobile. But I think the one thing, as you said, you know, just to expand a little bit, you know, the finishing, you know. Yeah, well, Andre, they lacked a the centre forward and yeah. we looked it through their squad as we were watching it. I mean, they have, as I say, these young, pacey players. They have 
some strong midfielders. I thought Coney, who came on in midfield, was exceptional. Yeah. Esequibo, or I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, in the middle was excellent as well for long periods of the game. Yeah. I thought defensively they were pretty strong. They had Borjan in goals as well, who was good. But I just think they lack that centre forward. And as I say, even the players on the bench, maybe the fans out there can tell us, maybe there is somebody there that could come in and make a difference. But yeah. I think um, just having that target man there would have made the difference. But at the end of the day, they've got nothing out of the game. But I think they're a very, very exciting team for the tournament. Correct, correct. And you know, like, you know, we're from the CONCACAF region, so it's really good to see Canada. They finished on top of the uh, the standings in our region. So, you know, they're very strong. And if they could kind of sort that composure in the attacking third, maybe the coach could have a discussion and tell the guys, you know, calm down. Let's try to, try to you know, maybe not do that extra touch. They may be able to hurt some teams and get that crucial goal that they needed. Because I think if they score today, it could have been with a bit more composure they could have hurt Belgium well the interesting thing is obviously we know John Herdman an excellent coach yeah, he, he's been in coaching I think the women and the men which yes. is something that was never really heard of before mm. he done well with both teams so um, but the one thing that's interesting is they scored so many goals in qualifying the women scored so many goals too so yeah. to lack that killer instinct I'm a little worried for them in one sense but as I say, I was it was it was so exciting to watch. Yes, it's yes. exactly what football should be about. You know, Jonathan David, Alfonso Davies bombing forward, as I say. We we spoke about a few they had Buchanan obviously well. um, yeah Buchanan was great, I think yeah. until he went off. Coney came on, but I just wanted that goal, they yep. didn't get it and, yes. and as I say we, we say that's football. Yes, yes, you know a lot of people, you know, I hate to say it, we always use the cliche about um, you know, points lost, points gained. I feel, you know, Canadians and CONCACAF in general could feel a sense of pride how they played because well, Canada has been around for a long time. This is the first time they played in the World Cup and before I answer that, James, <laughs> Well, the one thing I would just say before you say that is yeah. the good thing with this Canada performance is a lot of teams and a lot of people in the world will be saying, yeah. wow, CONCACAF actually has the pace, the flair, uh -huh. the passing ability and things that people probably didn't think we had over here. So mm -hmm. it's a good... That's a good advert for, Car for CONCACAF and Caribbean football. Correct. So, you know, just to add that, I'm going to do a little... I was going to tell you guys, but I think it's a perfect way to have some trivia, folks. Let us know the last time Canada was at the World Cup. Because they returned, returned folks, and they did really well. And they scored through qualifiers. So let us know what you think. Comment in the YouTube page, on the comment sections, on the, uh, the social media for uh, Smokey and Bunties, and also EXCB. There's a lot of places. And for those of you who are physically in Toronto and Tobago, Come on down and tell us yourselves. And the other thing I'd say there, everybody please stop calling me. You know you have my number one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm not gonna tell you what that actually is. <laughs> but uh, try and work it out. Yes, we yes, have yes. a great tool there on the internet. If you can't find out, I'm sure you can find it there. Yes, yes, yes. And you know, the thing is everybody has Google now. I would love to hear you people down here just because I know there's a lot of football gurus in Toronto Tobago. So folks, let us know what you think in all the various comment sections. And James, you know, just to end things off in this wonderful day of football and we have more. Uh, you know, just to remind you all, we'll be having a lot of giveaways as the tournament progresses. As James mentioned at the beginning, you know, we'll have that special prize. Uh, and you know, so come on down and enter. We'll have a draw for the people who are physically here. We'll have a little, uh, you know, draw. Pull some names out of the box or the hat or whatever we want to use. And we'll see who wins that prize. As well as small little giveaways and hampers. And also, folks, some lucky person may get a FIFA 23 from that draw as well. So we're going to just throw that in there. Just incentives. Incentives. So, James, uh, you know, today was an exciting day. Well, the one thing is the football's not over. We have more football again tomorrow. We have four big games again tomorrow. Obviously, we have Switzerland, Cameroon in the morning. We have Uruguay, South Korea. We talked about Uruguay before. They could be the underdogs in the tournament. Correct. And then we have my team, Portugal, Ghana at 12 o'clock. Yes, yes. And then at 3 o'clock, Brazil. Everybody loves Brazil here in Trinidad and Tobago against Serbia. So Except a me. great day of football to come again. Mm -hmm. So make sure you please come down here Support, the, support us here on the avenue at Smokey and Bunties. And as I say, there's that chance to win as many prizes as we can give out. Yep. And also, you know, it's, it's a nice vibe down here, as we see in Toronto, you guys. You can hear the music in the background. Of course, you know, we, we have some international fans all around us. You know, we can't show them on the camera right now because we're speaking to you guys. And we don't want to be rude to you guys. But come on down. It's a lovely uh, atmosphere. Lots of people. You'll meet people from all over the place. James is from Scotland. We have some German guys here. We have me from outside North Toronto, which is apparently another country, it seems. <laughs> so, you know, come and have some fun. So, folks, once again, it's been a pleasure. Um, James? We have lots of football, we have to pace ourselves. It's a marathon, not a sprint. We have to, you know, we, we made sure that we came into this tournament with good fitness. James and I are, are trying to keep it. So can we make it to the final? Yes. 
and be sure to continue to support us. Watch us on all the channels because we will be right back here tomorrow doing our thing. And my last thing I'm going to say, please like, subscribe, comment and enjoy the greatest show on earth.